toolkit functions. All right, these are functions that our book is referring to that are very common. Uh, they come up a lot, and we want to be somewhat familiar with each one of these and their shapes of their graphs. So the constant is just when our function is equal to some number over here, a constant. The identity is when you only have x on the other side. So what that means is if you plug in an x for your input, you're going to output the exact same value. So if I input a 1, we output a 1. If I input a 2, we output a 2, and so on. The absolute value function is using the absolute value symbols here. Um, basically, that means the distance from 0. So it, you can kind of think of it as it makes everything positive. All right, except for zero. Absolute value of zero is still zero, but if I input a positive number, like if I input a two in here, the absolute value of two is two because the distance two is from zero is, is well, two units. If I input a negative number, though, like negative three, the absolute value of negative three is going to turn out being positive three. All right, some other ones, the square, uh, a quadratic or power equation here, x squared, a cubic, x to the third power, or x cubed, the reciprocal identity, 1 over x, um, the reciprocal squared, 1 over x squared, the square root, the square root of x, or the uh, cube root, the cube root of x. Now it may be worth noting, and we'll see this in later sections, if you want to rewrite a square root, we can use a rational exponent. We can rewrite this as x to the 1 half power because it has an index of 2 that we don't typically write out in front there. I guess it was written over here. Um, the 1 from that fractional exponent is an exponent on the original. So we could say like x to the first power, that's why we got a 1 up in the exponent, uh, in the numerator of the rational exponent. So let's think about the cube root of x. That could also be written with a rational exponent. That would be x raised to the, has an exponent of 1, index of 3. So 1 third is a power means the same thing as a cube root. And we're going through these kind of quickly, but we want to start familiarizing ourselves with these graphs. All right, the constant graph is simply a horizontal line that goes straight across at whatever value uh, constant we have here. So any value we plug in for x, like if we input a 1, we're going to output a 2. So that would be like the ordered pair, 1, 2 is going to be on this line. All right, we could do the same thing. Like if I input a 3, that's going to go with the ordered pair uh, 3, 2. Um, but it actually works for any other value. I know I'm picking integer values, but we could pick like 1.5. All right, you also get another point on our line. All right, the identity function is this uh, line that goes straight through the first and third quadrants. All right, and we had already mentioned like the ordered pair 1, 1 is going to be on here or 2, 2, matches up with another point on here. Whatever you input, you're going to output. The absolute value function kind of looks like a V over here on the right-hand side, because remember, it's making everything positive. All right, so all those negative values, if we plug them in, it's going to output a positive um, with the same value, just in the positive sense. A few more of these. Quadratic, and this one we use quite a bit. Um, the quadratic has this shape to it, and I know don't, we don't have arrows up here at the top, but it does continue going up forever. All right, the cubic, the right side goes up when the left side goes down. The square root, you'll see that it starts here at zero and only goes off to the right-hand side, meaning we can only input positive values into the square root function. All right, that is something we would say is the domain of this function. It starts at zero, and you can only input positive values. We'll talk about domains in just a little bit. The cubic, uh, or sorry, the cube root function, down here in the bottom left, x to the one third power, as we mentioned earlier, you can input any value you want for x. So we can input values that are positive, or values that are negative, as far as x values go, because those are the inputs here. The reciprocal and reciprocal squared functions look a little bit strange. The reciprocal function only lies in the first and third quadrants. And you'll notice that at the extremes, like way off to the right, way off to the left, we get very close to the x-axis, but we never quite get there. And you can kind of think about that as if you plugged in a really big number for x, like 100, 1 one-hundredth is a very small number, um, but it's not quite zero. 
You'll also notice on this that we're not allowed to plug in an x value of zero. This is what we refer to as a vertical asymptote at the y-axis and a horizontal asymptote at the x-axis. Um, and again, this kind of goes back to the domain. We're not allowed to divide by zero, so I can't put a zero in for this x. The same thing can kind of be true about the reciprocal squared function. We're not allowed to divide by zero, so you can't put a zero in for x. Um, it has graph in the first quadrant and the second quadrant, and again has the same vertical and horizontal asymptotes as the reciprocal function. All right, hope this helps out. Get used to these functions. Um, the more, the easier it is to recall what they look like, the easier it's going to be if we ever try to graph any of this stuff. All right, hope this helps. Good luck.